Hi everyone. Today's video is for moms. It's not for kids. However, I'll choose my words carefully in case any are watching. So I was going to talk today about voting just a little bit. And I was thinking back to when I was in school and mine may be the last generation that did the pledge to the flag in the classrooms. Do you remember that? Maybe not, but Maybe you're like me, and every day, every morning at school, we all rose to do the pledge in our classrooms, and I don't think they're doing that as much anymore, but I thought maybe we could think about the words of that pledge uh, for just a minute before we get started. So, I pledge allegiance to the flag, and we know it's not to a flag, it's to our country, because remember, our forefathers had come from... England from being governed by England, where the English flag, the British flag was flying. So they were saying, we pledge allegiance to our new country, to the flag, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Aren't those words beautiful? Well, what is a republic? We're pledging to our country, which is a republic. Well, a republic, unlike the monarchy that they had come from, which was ruled by a king who made all the decisions, a, a republic is ruled by the people. We elect representatives, and when we vote, it gives us a voice. Those representatives represent us. They're going to do our wishes. We are controlled. Our country is controlled by the people. So that means our votes count, don't they? That's our voice. When I was 18, I was in high school as a senior because my birthday was in November. I remember someone coming to our school and talking to us about voting. And then in the library, they had it set up with tables and you could actually go and register to vote. And I did that. I still remember going into the library that day, registering to vote and being so excited and proud that I would get to vote. I saw it as a privilege, as a right, and I was excited to get to participate in what was going on in my country. Well, fast forward many years, I think that now more than ever, our votes are important, and I think that we need to get out and vote. I, as you know, if you watch anything on this channel, love children. I teach children. I write a lot of things for children or families or churches or resources that help, especially, especially children, and they are very dear to my heart. And so I want to talk today about voting for the children. There are many, many, many reasons for us to vote, but today I'm going to talk about three as pertaining to children. So I'm going to do some statistics. So talk about some statistics. So let me just put on my glasses so I'll be able to read this to you. So first, three reasons. First, um, I believe that there is an attack on our children and it's an enemy attack. It's Satan. It's the devil. And we know that our battle is not with flesh and blood, but um, we do know that there are two parties and one above the other, maybe helping to protect uh, and defend the children. So the first area I want to talk about is abortion. So abortion is just ending those little children's lives even before they get started. Every year in this country, 625,978 children are aborted. They're killed before they even get a chance. And we know that the Bible tells us that we are image bearers. So even before they get a chance to bear Christ's image, to reflect God to the world, and there's so much potential there in all of those children, their lives are taken. And that number comes from the CDC. So I chose the resources that would not seem you know, inflated in any way, that is, and it, it could be more, it could be more because that study was done a couple of years ago. So that's a lot of children, 625,978 babies, unborn, preborn babies die every year. Well, we know that um, Donald Trump, when he was president, appointed Supreme Court justices that would work to overturn Roe versus Wade, which they did. After the overturning, some states um, listed as much as 20% decrease in abortion. So on the other spectrum, when Roe versus Wade started, when it became um, a law, 
the numbers increased, the numbers of abortions increased by 50%. So that is a lot more children who were killed. And on the other end, that 20% even in some of states was a lot of children that were saved. And we do know that Donald Trump was the one who appointed those Supreme Court justices to work toward ending at least some of the abortions by overturning Roe versus Wade. So that was a big win for our children, for the preborn. The second thing is gender. We know that's an attack on our children. I feel like there's a bullseye on our children by the enemy, don't you? And this gender dysphoria is one of those. Gender dysphoria is defined as the distress caused by a discrepancy between a person's gender identity and the one assigned to them at birth. Well, we know what the Bible says. In the beginning, God created man and woman. There are two genders. Look at the animal kingdom And that will give you an indication that there are only two genders. Let's take just one example, a small, tiny example of the cardinal. The male cardinal is bright red. The female cardinal is a darker, duller color. Only the female cardinal can lay eggs. They cannot change. Even the animal kingdom shows us God's design for just two genders. It is not loving our children to teach them and to cause them this distress, which makes them think that they can be X, Y, or Z. It's just not loving them. Loving them is telling them the truth. That's what would be the right thing. And we know that because of this current administration, the number of puberty blockers and hormone therapies and even surgeries, the top being mastectomies, are performed in this country. And let me show you a text that I actually got um, on my phone. I'm just going to read it to you. It says, Kamala Harris believes LGBTQIA youth deserve access to gender-affirming care and safe, inclusive schools. And it says, in my town, it lists my town, Kamala will ensure minors can access the care they need without fear of parental intervention or discrimination. Help make our schools as trans-friendly as possible. Now, that was a text that I got. Did you hear that? Parents were going to be, it says, not able to intervene in their children's choices of their gender. And I know that we are responsible for how we raise our children. We are in charge. And taking that right away from parents uh, and putting it into the hands of schools or even our children, minors, is not a good thing. And you heard it yourself, which party is for that. And we know that um, we do not want to cause our children that distress, that gender dysphoria distress. We want them to know the truth. So I do not believe we need to vote for Kamala Harris. And you just heard the reasons why. The third thing is that at the border, many migrants are coming in and I teach so many international students and I absolutely love them. And I would love them to be a part of our country. Some of them are, lots of them are that I teach. They are so precious, but they have come into our country legally. Coming in illegally sets up a lot of problems, especially for our children. 320,000 children are unaccounted for that have come through the border which sets them up for risks of trafficking or human, uh, excuse me, or forced labor, or maybe many of them have even lost their lives. And that was from the New York Post. So you know that this is a big problem. And we know that one administration is for um, allowing those borders to remain open. And one president, uh, former President Trump was working hard to close the border. So I just hope that these reasons will give you pause to think about the great responsibility we have to make our voices heard by voting in this election. Vote for many, many reasons, but definitely vote to help keep our children safe. Thank you for listening, everyone, and I will talk to you in another video.